How many lightning lanes can I get at Disney's Hollywood Studios? It's a race weekend. It's spring break. It's Hollywood Studios. This may be the hardest challenge I've ever done. This is for sure the hardest part to navigate right now because it's got so many heavy hitter attractions. You've got Rise of the Resistance, the most popular ride in all of Walt Disney World, Smuggler's Run, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Slinky Dog Dash, Rock and Roller Coaster, Tower of Terror. And that's not all. There's other attractions, there's shows. This is for sure the hardest part to navigate right now. The lines get incredibly long, but Genie Plus can be incredibly frustrating. So let's see how many we can realistically do. Tips and tricks coming your way. Genie is the system Disney rolled out about six months ago to replace FastPass Plus. There are three versions of Genie. There's the free Genie, which can be used to make customized itineraries. You can use the tip board, the dining tip board, predictive wait times. Then there's Genie Plus, which is $15 per person per day. It allows you access to skip the line at over 40 attractions and experiences across all four parks. You can use it once per experience. And then there are fancy rides, as I call them, which are an individual cost to skip the line. You do not have to purchase Genie Plus to purchase a fancy ride. You can purchase Genie Plus for the entire length of your ticket or starting at midnight day of. And selections for Genie Plus can be made starting at 7 a.m. for both resort guests and non-resort guests. Fancy rides can begin being purchased at 7 a.m. for resort guests and at the time the park opens for non-resort guests. You do not have to be in the park to book either. Last buzzword I'll give you right now is Lightning Lane. That's just the physical entrance at the attraction. Both Genie Plus attractions and Fancy Rides have Lightning Lanes. That's just the physical queue. Today, I am a resort guest mooching off of one of Quincy's resort tours. So I was able to book both my Genie Plus and purchase the Fancy Ride right at 7 a.m. I recommend booking the Genie Plus attraction first before booking the Fancy Ride because everybody has access to Genie Plus and only resort guests have access to fancy rides. But make sure you're quick. Additionally, we've tested it. You can have one person logged in on their phone booking the Genie Plus while another person is logged in on a different phone booking the fancy ride at the same time. This is why it's so important to make sure everybody's all linked up and ready to go before 7 a.m. when you're actually trying to book things. I am headed to my first location right now. You can probably guess where I'm going by the direction of my feet. Slinky Dog Dash. Slinky Dog Dash is for sure a tier one priority when it comes to booking Genie at this park. I wrote a post on All Ears Net and we'll share here along the video how much you should prioritize those based on if I consider them a tier one, two, or three attraction. Some tips for booking right at 7 a.m. I used my husband's phone to have world clock open so that I could be counting down the seconds to refresh right at 7 a.m. I also highly recommend pinning the ride you're going for to you at the top of your tip board so that way you're not trying to scroll. To pin attractions, you need to set up your Disney Genie. You can do this on the My Day tab. Click Set Up Disney Genie. It will ask you what day you'd like to set up and what park. It's gonna default to whatever park you have reservations at. Click that park, it'll then ask your top picks. You can click as many things as you'd like. Well, I lied to you. You can click up to 15 things from dining, shows, rides, and then those are gonna be pinned to the top of your tip board. The things at the top of your tip board are, again, the things that you have picked as your top picks. And if you hit edit selections from then on, you can add and subtract things. So when I'm on the lookout for a certain Genie Plus attraction, I make sure it is pinned so it's at the top and I don't have to scroll. It's 9 a.m. right now. The park's been officially open for all guests for 30 minutes. There's already a 40 minute wait at Runaway Railway and a 255 Genie 40 at Smugglers 425, 60 at Rock and Roller Coaster 1120, Toy Story Mania 30 minutes, 1030, Tower of Terror 105, 550. As you can see, this park is very busy very quickly. Let's go see Rise. Slinky's already a 70 minute wait, but I have seen it pop up a few times. So keep checking back if you don't get it right at 7 a.m. And Rise, I've seen pop up a few times as well. It's sold out within a few minutes this morning, and it, I've seen it pop up twice since, but it's already got a 145 minute wait. Still try at 7 a.m., but don't lose hope and keep checking back. But let's see if we can fiddle faddle and get something soon. <laughs> Slinky 
dog dash check. I think that ride is so delightful and just whimsical fun, but I understand it already is a 70 minute wait and it's normally in the direct sun. It's like horribly muggy today. I get it. I get why you wouldn't want to wait in that line. My best tip, if you're not purchasing Genie Plus, if you are a resort guest, getting into this park for your 30 minutes early is crucial to your successful day. You can go watch my perfect day in this park where I did just that. Or I actually, my favorite time to ride this is at night because this whole land looks amazing. And um, at any attraction, if you get in line one minute before the park closes, you can still ride even if it's still 70 minutes. So then you're spending 70 minutes after park time, not during park time. So that's my number one recommendation if you're not purchasing Genie. But there is no other park where booking right at 7 a.m. is as important. I rarely see Slinky Dog come back available. So I did some fiddle faddling while I was waiting to board and when I got off. Fiddle faddling is just my term for refreshing the page. If you pull down on the tip board, it refreshes the page. And sometimes the times change that are available. Sometimes they move back further, but sometimes they move up closer and if you're quick, you can snag a closer time. A 10.05 Runaway Railway popped up, a 10.30 Toy Story Mania popped up. Those are great options. You should take them. I did not take them. Because for me, it's about getting all of them, and I wanted something closer. So I booked some of the character experiences because I could book them for right now. There are two character meet and greet experiences at this park currently on Lightning Lane. There is meeting Olaf, and then there's meeting Mickey and Minnie. So those are usually pretty close. Now keep in mind those do close at 5 while the park is open till 9 tonight. So if you want to do that, make sure you're aware that they may close a little early. And you can always see that by clicking into it off your tip board. You can always see that attraction's hours. Now again, this is do as I say, not as I do. Because what I would have recommended is snagging the 10.05 Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and then just doing walk-ups to meet the characters because they only have five minute waits right now. Or go do star tours or go get a coffee and wait for the 45 minutes. But again, today's about numbers. Hi, Olaf. How are you? Are you having a good day? Yes. Have you been? It's very warm outside. It's sunny. I like that you got your lemonade. Gonna have a nice day. <laughs> oh, you're so cute, Olaf. Can we take a selfie together? said hello to everyone's favorite snowman. I can't wait till I can hug him again. That starts coming back April 18th, which may have already happened by the time this airs. I don't remember. What is time? What is time? Anyway, April 18th, character meet and greets start coming back like to normal with autographs and hugs. And right after I hugged Olaf, I booked Star Tours. Star Tours has a current posted five minute wait. It's starting to fill up though, so my guess is it's about to go up to like 15 or 20, which still is not that long compared to most things in the park. This is usually a pretty good filler ride. Hello! When I say filler ride, I don't mean anything bad about the attraction. I just mean it doesn't normally have as long of a wait. And Star Tours can get up there, but there are a lot of times during the day where this will have 30 minutes and everything else has 70 or 90 or longer so this is usually a good one you don't need to use a lightning lane here it does make me super motion sick so I'm also trying to get it over with before I eat anything it's a trap also this is a very good animatronic that I feel like doesn't get any credit most attractions have two touch points but as you can see sometimes they cover them up as soon as you've tapped into the second touch point, you can start fiddle faddling again for another ride. So since there was no second touch point, I could start looking to see what I want to book next. But that's one of my best tips is always have one. Always be looking. But that tip's kind of a trap because there's no way to modify it once you've booked it. You have to cancel it and rebook it the next thing. And if it's something rare that's popped up, you're probably going to lose it. So be selective but always be keeping your eye out. Not like on rides and stuff, obviously. We are not ready for takeoff. Mr. Tours, you're my only hope. Yeah, we're all in the Rebel Alliance.
now Selena Force be with us. And uh, thank you for playing Star Wars. That ride makes me nauseous, but everyone in my cabin was having so much fun and like yelling and screaming and clapping, so it was kind of fun. Um, we went to Kashyyyk. Also, my theory right now, because this park is difficult for so many reasons, but one of the biggest reasons as far as this challenge goes are the shows. There's a lot of shows. There's Beauty and the Beast, Indiana Jones, uh, Frozen, Disney Junior, and shows, unlike rides, are hard in something like this because unlike a ride where you could get like 10, 10, 05, 10, 10, 10, 15, so on and so forth, there's numerous, numerous time slots you could get for the whole day. Shows only have so many shows. There's only five Beauty and the Beast shows all day, which means there's only five return windows you can get. And to make things more difficult, if the return window is 10.30 to 10.50 for the 11 o'clock show, the system clears it out the minute it's 10.30. So it's not like at 10.31 I can book for the 11 o'clock show. So my plan right now is to do as many things as I can before I start triggering shows because there's going to come a time where I'm going to have to sit down and refresh my screen for a long time to get all these big rides. But it is not that time yet, friends. So most of the shows, the windows open at 10.30. It's 9.45 right now. I'd like to do a one to two more things if possible before I start doing the shows. 3.10 Mickey and Minnie's already 60-minute line. 55-minute line at Falcon. 5.20, 65-minute line at Coaster. 1.20, already a 30-minute line to meet Mickey and Minnie, but I could pull it for 10 a.m., 65 minute line at Toy Story, 11 a.m., 90 minutes already at Tower, 6 p.m. Now, if I were you, I would have kicked off the dreaded 120 minute rule. And then I would be doing all the stuff I'm doing, standby. I would have ridden Star Tours, met some characters, be ready to go to a show, gotten something to eat. I would be doing that in standby. Because the shows, for the most part, you don't need to use a lightning lane. And then, of course, I've always got your friend and mine, Muppet Vision, in my back pocket, which I could get for, like, five minutes from now. So I'm just going to refresh a few times to see if anything more interesting than Muppets comes up. No offense to Kermit, I love you. Otherwise, we're going to book and go do Muppets, and then also try and do either Alien Twirling Saucers or Mickey and Minnie before the first show I book. Muppet Vision 3D is one of my favoriteest things. Because I adore the Muppets. I watched them a lot growing up with my mom. So I have very fond memories of the Muppets. And I just think they're so funny. Thank you. I love all the gags. You must be shorter than this center. Hilarious. Department of Artificial Reality. This is not a door. Tell me you're not smiling. Oh, they match my hair. I have the great honor of introducing the one of the only Mr. Mickey Mouse. Hello, hi there, welcome to my pod. Hi ho, I'm Mickey Frog here, and welcome to Muffin Vision 3D. I did something I wanted to spring on you. <laughs> Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah, too bad you're gonna spoil it with this big. Are you about ready? Yes, it's a glorious three hour minority. You got a minute and a half. Oh. Muppet Vision 3D, done, check, amazing, delightful. I did a little fiddle faddling, waiting to go into the show, and I was actually able to pull a Toy Story Mania for right now. So I gotta walk all the way back to Toy Story Land, and my goal is to get there and tap in before 10.30 so then I can book the first Beauty and the Beast. I wanted to do two more before I started the shows, but I couldn't pass up a Toy Story Mania soon. A lot of times people ask, if it's possible to not run all over the park and stay together or stay more in a circular pattern, it's very hard to do that at this park, especially. One, there's not really a circular pattern the way this park's laid out. There's dead ends. And two, especially if you're using Genie Plus or taking advantage of the low weights during early theme park entry, you're going to have to do a little zigzagging to get the best results. Which I know is a lot easier for me than a family with like strollers and wheelchairs and everything else. This already has a 70 minute wait. It's like almost 10.30 right now. 70 minute wait at Toy Story Mania. 
90 minute wait at Slinky Dog, which I know Genie Plus costs money, which isn't great. I know it's confusing, which is more annoying to me, but these lines are out of control. This park just has too many good rides and not enough filler rides. Of course, there's filler shows. All right, I don't think there's another touch point, so I can go ahead and book Beauty and the Beast. Wait, no, there is. I have two minutes. Oh my gosh, I better walk faster. Oh no, I might not make it. I better have it open and ready for Beauty and the Beast. I want to do Beauty and the Beast because there's only five Beauty and the Beast shows. Oh, of course, tip board's not working. Great. I dumped Disney Wi-Fi. Book, 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 book. It's 1029. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Whew. We got it. We got it. Woo, that was stressful. at a weird way because of the construction but I did get to walk out and see this poster. Hello. Toy Story Mania. Check. I now have seven minutes to get to Beauty and the Beast live on stage. Because in my experience while the rides will let you tap in a few minutes late like up to 10-ish minutes in case you got stuck on another ride or Going along those lines, the shows will not because the shows start when the shows start. So I am slinky dog dashing right now. I haven't even had time to get gold brew yet, and the line is so long. Oh my goodness! Tap it in with one minute to spare. <laughs> Hello, thank you, thank you. I love Beauty and the Beast live on stage. I love the music, but I don't think you need to book it with Genie Plus. This is a great filler. I just featured it in a video I did where I did a bunch of stuff that doesn't have weights typically. So this is a great thing to do in between lightning lanes or if you've kicked off the dreaded 120 minute rule. <laughs> typically, if you just show up 10 minutes before the show there's still plenty of room so show up 10 15 minutes early you should be just fine this is the first show so it tends to be less crowded as well so maybe 20 minutes if it's middle of the day show want to make you aware that just because you have a lightning lane doesn't mean you have a priority seat it just means you have a seat so you can pick anywhere there are much better seats i'm actually going to sit towards the back so that i can get out faster when it's over but you can sit anywhere you want Beauty and the Beast live on stage. What a treat it is. Okay, Tower of Terror, you're my nemesis now. Tower of Terror is already gone for the day. And Smuggler's Run is flirting with being gone for the day. It's only 11.30. There's a 105 minute wait at Tower of Terror, no lightning lights left. Tower of Terror's have been running at half capacity recently, making it even more challenging. Alien Swirling Saucers, 35 minutes. Noon Lightning Lane. All the shows are available for their next show. Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, 60 minute wait, 720 Lightning Lane. Smuggler's Run, 75 minute wait, no Lightning Lanes. Coaster, 90 minute wait, 7 p.m. Lightning Lane. Mickey and Minnie, 40 minute wait, noon Lightning Lane. 100 at Slinky Dog, no Lightning Lanes. 45 minutes at Star Tours and an 11.55 Lightning Lane. Rises down classic um hope it comes back up before the one i bought and toy story mania 65 minutes 425 clearly i'm gonna have to deal with the 120 minute rule 
There's no way around it in this park. And I need to do it soon because I need to worry about Tower of Terror. So what I did was I booked the next Indiana Jones, which is an 11.30 to 11.45 return window for the noon show. I'm going to tap in right at 11.30, and then I'm going to start a fiddle a faddle in. Indiana Jones is probably the one show I'd recommend using a lightning lane on. It can get very full. You can see there's already a queue forming. Thank you. Thank you. You can see there's already a pretty long line forming for standby 30 minutes before the show. Granted, they haven't let anyone in the theater yet. Um, and this is the one show I've been turned away from with like 20 minutes before the show because they're full. So if you want a guarantee seat, I would recommend it here. But it's still a tier two as far as like importance goes. The rides are still more of a priority. As you can see, I have pinned Tower of Terror and Tower of Terror only to the top. It's now a 135 minute wait, and I am just going to do this for as long as it takes for any time to pop up. I am not picky right now. I will kick the 120 minute rule off. Any time will do, Tower. Sense spectacular. Yeah. It's the only thing left in this park that reminds me of MGM Studios. Since it's now Hollywood Studios, a lot has changed. But this is so old school, like showing you how they make movies. The whole crowd is so into it every time I go to. It's one of those shows where like your little kids are gonna like it, but the parents are also gonna like it. There's some good jokes in there, your grandparents are gonna like it. It's a multi-generational good time. And Bonus fun fact, you may not know this, but sometimes you can actually meet Marion and Indy after the show, the stunt doubles. Um, look down to the bottom right of the stage if you're looking at the stage after the show, and they sometimes, with some of the other guys, will gather down there, and you can meet them and get a picture like this. Also, Marion liked my hair, so I feel very cool. Anyway, so many good things have happened as well. One, I fiddle-faddled for literally 30 minutes and didn't see a single tower and I almost pulled the trigger on a Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run because that one's also flirting with being gone and then literally right at noon as the show was starting a two something tower popped up and I snatched it in Fiddle Faddle We Trust and the second piece of good news is that Rise has reopened so I'm gonna go ride that now because this is when my fancy ride Lightning Lane was booked this morning and let's talk about fancy rides as I head over there. Fancy rides, TM, is a phrase I say because I don't want to say individual lightning lane a la carte paid selections, but there is currently one fancy ride in each park, and these are a separate cost from Genie Plus. You do not have to buy Genie Plus to get fancy rides and vice versa. For resort guests, you can book them at 7 a.m. For non-resort guests, you can book them at the time the park officially opens. Rise of the Resistance is most likely not going to be available by the time non-resort guests can book it. I have very rarely seen it pop up, but most of the time it is gone by the time, it's gone within like one minute usually of 7 a.m. Additionally, fancy rides, you choose what time you would like to go. As opposed to Genie Plus attractions, it's next available. When I selected Rise, Moments after I had booked Slinky Dog, I selected 8.50 a.m. It thought for a second and said, actually, it's going to be 10 o'clock. And then by the time my payment went through, it was 12.35 to 1.35. So that can happen. It's because there's literally thousands of other people trying to do the same thing. But I still got it. And Rise has been down for like a while. And it's back up now. So I'm going to go ride it before I have any more bad luck with the rise. The reason I wanted to kick off the dreaded 120 minute rule, we gotta talk about it now, don't we? I was trying to make the 120 minute rule Bruno, but we gotta talk about it now. 
the 120 minute rule is very confusing but basically this applies to genie plus only not fancy rides you can book your next genie plus lightning lane either a when you've tapped in and used the first one b when the original window expired because you didn't use it for some reason or c two hours after you've booked one whichever comes first so because i booked tower of terror more than two hours from when i booked it i can book it i can book another one in 120 minutes you can always check to see when your 120 minute rule is up by trying to book another one and it'll say sorry you can't book one till x time i then set an alarm as a pro tip for one minute before x time so that way i'm ready to go as soon as possible in this park it's going to be very hard not to hit the 120 minute rule at least once we may hit it again today. So it's good to have a plan for what you're gonna do in your 120 minutes. I wanted to tap into Indiana Jones and then pull it because I knew Indiana Jones would be a 30 minute show. That took up a quarter of my 120 minutes. I knew I had rise for this time. This is gonna take up another about quarter. I might go get a snack. This would be a good time to do some filler rides or shows without Genie Plus. There's plenty to do. So you just gotta make sure you have a good plan for when you hit that 120 minutes. Now there is gonna be a little bit of a backup it looks like because the ride was down. When an attraction goes down, they give you a redemption to use at any time when it comes back up, but they are gonna prioritize the lightning lane by a lot over the standby lane. So I don't think it'll take too long. I think it'll take less than 10 minutes. every time when that beautiful John Williams music starts. I say pay for it if you don't want to wait in a really long line. If you're a resort guest and don't want to pay for it, get to early theme park admission as early as possible and rope drop it. The problem is with this ride being so technological, it breaks a lot. Like today, I could tell Kylo Ren's what broke because they used B-screen Kylo Ren on my adventure. So I would rather pay for it and guarantee that I have a slot that I can use even if it doesn't open on time you can use it later plus then you can come for early theme park admission and get on something like tower which is also causing problems so i would pay for it if you don't want to pay for it as a resort guest rope drop as a non-resort guest rope drop we did a whole video on this where we love quincy and i did it three different ways so you can check that out but other best bet is wait till last thing at night but the line is still probably going to be 90 minutes and it might break so it's a dicey one but it's worth it i've got about 35 minutes left till i can book one so i'm also going to use this time to grab a little lunch anyway some exciting and interesting things have happened for starters as i was picking up my lunch i got a notification that Tower of Terror is closed, and so therefore I have an Experience Redemption Pass. It looks like this. An Experience Redemption Pass is what they give you when your attraction is closed during your return time, or it's about to be your return time. It has a list of places you can use it, as well as exemptions, so you can't use it at like Slinky Dog Dash, you can't use it at Rise of the Resistance, but you can use it at a lot of other places, including Tower of Terror when it comes back up. I'm gonna try and save it for Tower of Terror because I feel like I earned it for Tower of Terror. I didn't earn Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway or Rock and Roller Coaster or anything like that yet. But also no, an experience redemption doesn't count in your phone as a lightning lane. So the system thinks of them as two different things, which means I could start fiddle faddling a few minutes early. And let me just say, 
It's starting to look bleak out there, friends. I'm having a few problem children, including one that you didn't think would be a problem, possibly, but it's a bigger problem than I originally thought. For the record, during my fiddle faddling, I was able to have some things pop up that had initially said they were gone, but I ultimately decided to go with frozen because it was the closest thing and because as soon as I tap in, I'll have more time to fiddle faddle for something closer. This is another show like Beauty and the Beast live on stage that I don't think you need to use a lightning lane for. Usually if you show up 20 minutes beforehand, you'll get a spot. And I love this one. I think this one's so underrated. Also, I like to take my ears off during the shows as a courtesy to the people behind me. Oh yeah, she has these really cool icy snow powers. Like, um, pew, pew, pew! Ice! Wait, the guy? Well, Get parents? Come on, what is this, Bambi? Or Cinderella? Or the Lion King? Or a goofy movie, I assume? Because they never explained Max's mom. It was beyond cold. It was free! I think that show is so funny. That was a new male uh, narrator I hadn't seen perform before. And he had me and the audience in stitches. And that woman is hilarious. I just think that is such a great filler attraction and underrated show. Now, um, Tower of Terror has come back up. Lucky for me. I fiddled and I faddled forever to get a Mickey and Minnie for 3.30, which it only is a 20 minute wait. Don't, don't refresh your phone for 30 minutes to get something that has a 20 minute wait if you want to do it. Uh, so I'm going to go use my experience redemption on tower and then go over there. This attraction is so fun. It's a lot of people's favorite, but as I said, it's been running on half capacity recently, which is rough because the way a line works, it's based on how popular the ride is, the capacity of the ride, and how fast you can load and unload it. So rides like Tower of Terror, very popular, low capacity, and it takes a long time to load and unload the elevators, and you cut it in half right now. So that's why the standby line's always so long. Friendly reminder that Lightning Lane doesn't mean immediate access, it just means priority access. So I've been in this line for maybe 10 minutes already, um, because of course they're get, everybody that missed it when it was closed is coming back. So just like I talked about at Rise, and because this one actually loads slower than Rise at this point, it's taking a while to get through the Lightning Lane. So remember what you gotta pack when you come to Disney World, especially this park. It's your patient pants. of terror complete. I mean, it's a great attraction. I personally like, don't, don't get mad, but I like Guardians over in DCA better because I think the music is fun and I think that there's more hang time, but this one's a classic. I love that you never know what you're gonna get. It is a blast and a half. Now it's time to go see Mickey Mouse, but I see a basically non-existent Joffrey's line. And if you can believe it, I haven't had coffee today because we've been going so much, so. We have a lot of big boys left. We don't have a lot left, but <laughs> they're hard. So I need some shaky Jamaica. Let's do a little status update. I'm headed to go meet Mickey and Minnie right now. It's 3.38. I still need to book five things in level of scared and difficulty from least difficult to most. The Disney Junior Dance Party, very easy. Alien Swirling Saucers just ran out, so I, I have faith it'll come back, but it's gone for now. Rock and Roller Coaster, seen it pop up a few times, but also out. Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway and Smuggler's Run. I'd put those at the top. Those three, honestly, are all monsters. 
they've all been gone for hours and hours and I'm um, stressed about them. Red Carpet Dreams only recently reopened and you get to meet both Mickey and Minnie, but not together. Minnie is in like a movie star dress. And then it's Sorcerer Mickey. Met Mickey and Minnie, they were very cute. I love those outfits. Now I'm standing here fiddle faddling. I think I'm gonna go get a snack. So much has happened in the last four minutes since I was talking to you. It was probably like longer than that, but it's only been seconds in the world video. So I was refreshing and fiddle faddling and fiddle faddling, and I saw a 410 for Smuggler's Run pop up, and I got very excited. I went to book it, and it's like, you can't book that. You can't book one until 4.30 because you already have one. And I was like, do not. But it turns out my Mickey and Minnie meet and greet one hadn't cleared off because the cast member was using like a handheld device instead of a touch point. And when I went in to cancel it, it wouldn't let me. There was no option to cancel it, which was sad. So because I tried multiple times, I hard closed out of the app. I did all kinds of things. Cause sometimes that happens where it's like you try to go in and cancel it and that button's not available. So I usually hard close out of the app and then go back in and it's fine, but it wouldn't. So I went to the guest experience cast members, which are in the blue polos and I was nice. And I explained what happened and I showed them my screenshots, screenshot everything. And they, one removed the Mickey one, so it wasn't on my van anymore. And then they also were so kind as to book me a Millennium Falcon for now. I since I screenshot it and could show them, hey, look, I had one at 410 and it wouldn't let me book it. They booked me one for right now because it's already past 410. So thank you, kind cast members. Also, I asked them if they get yelled at a lot and they said yes. And one of them was like, I cry almost every day. And that broke my heart. So this is the part of the video where I tell you to be nice to cast members. Um, it's not, they didn't make Genie Plus. They know it's frustrating and confusing and it's still a new system and there are glitches and I get it, it's annoying. But be nice to them because they can fix it. They might not be able to give you Rise of Resistance if you didn't get it, but they can, if you can show them what went wrong and it's something they can fix, they will. But they don't have to. They could have said, oh, sorry, we'll cancel your Mickey and Minnie and be on your way. But because I was nice, they gave me a smuggler's run. So being nice goes a long way. Screenshots and being nice. Words to live by. Now let's go to the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy. Hello, Millennium Falcon. Oh, Ray or Chewy are out here. How cool. Anyway, let's get to tapping in. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run suffers from the same thing as Tower of Terror, where it's very popular, but very low capacity. So it, with a lightning lane, has a very, very long line all the time. It's 85 minutes right now. It's rare to see it under an hour. This is a great one to use your Genie Plus on. I would probably book Slinky first, then Tower, and then this. It's probably how I would do it. And it may be a little bit out, but again, you can do all this other stuff I've done as filler if you hit that 120 minute rule again. Or if you have an hour or so, just go see Beauty and the Beast. Now the Lightning Lane does cut off a little bit of the queue. You don't get that cool overlook of the Millennium Falcon. You don't get to walk all the way through the catwalk in the hangar, but you still get Hondo and you're skipping an 85 minute line, so no complaints from me. Do not get my fighting for the grid. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run done. It was very funny because I was with this family who was like yelling at each other because <laughs> mom and sister were bad pilots and they kept being like, you're bad at driving a spaceship. No, you're bad at driving a spaceship and everyone was laughing. Um, and that ride really is fun when you're with a group of people. I feel like I'm just intruding on a family's nice memories, <laughs> but at least I was in the back as the engineer. <laughs> Now, I wasn't able to pull anything of the rides, and because there's only two Disney Junior shows left, I went ahead and booked the next one, which my window opened four minutes ago for it, so I'm headed there now. And what if the last one gets canceled for some reason? I get taken 
out by Disney Junior. Disney Junior is the last show I have today. Now I just have three rides and about four hours of park time. But they do stop distributing lightning lanes usually about 40 minutes before the park close. Disney Junior Dance Party is very cute if you have small children who like these characters or just small kids in general. It is very interactive. There's not really a lot of seats in there. There's a couple in the back for mom and dad. But for the kiddos, thank you. They are up out of their seats and dancing. And it's really, really cute. It's creepy that I'm here alone as an adult. But if you've got kids that like these characters, it's like Vampirina and Mickey and uh, De Hawk McStuffins, Timon. If you've got kids that like these characters, it is fun and a great way for them to burn out some energy. Mom and Dad, you get some AC. They're playing High School Musical too. What's up? Well, my name is Brandon, everybody say. What's up, Brandon? show is truly so cute and it's only like 15 minutes long so definitely don't need a lightning lane there all three rides i'm missing popped up at some point and i was too slow to get the soon mickey and minnie and rockin which i think are going to be the harder two and of course the most important of the remaining three so i'm going to keep fiddle paddling but i need coffee to do oh what I'm recommending you do but it is what I just did and it was fiddle battle for an hour <laughs> I sat I had my coffee I had a treat for another video and I refreshed my phone for an hour but I finally got a 640 for rock and roller coaster which is, this is the first time I saw rock and roller co coaster pop up in a long time so I felt good about taking it even though it's like 35 minutes from now don't sit and fiddle paddle for an hour hopefully by this point in the day if you were me if you were having a perfect day you would have already done these rides because you would have booked them and then used some of the rides I've done as filler in between. So I'm wondering if I went too quantity earlier and not enough quality. But we got Rock and Roller Coaster and then there's two more. But I've got 30 minutes. So we're going to the Brown Derby Lounge to have a cocktail. <laughs> One old fashioned later, we are cruising down Sunset Boulevard to go tap in as soon as possible at Rock and Roller Coaster. Once I do that, I will have approximately one hour and 40 minutes left of Genie Plus time. And I've got two more. So, may the force be with me. But actually what's very funny is sitting next to me at Brown Derby Lounge were some lovely ladies who watched the channel and they were like, oh, we're just having a cocktail and fiddle faddling and they pulled Millennium Falcon while we are sitting there. So it works, people. I also want to point out that uh, it works the same for up to 10. The system will allow you to add up to 12, which is why I always said up to 12, but there's been some issues with 11 and 12 people, even though you can still had, add up to 12, which is very frustrating. Um, so the, the techniques, the things I'm showing you work the same up to 10. So a lot of people think that I'm able to do so many lightning lanes because I'm by myself, but it doesn't actually matter. We did a video here where Alan Duckfist Quincy and I did the big rides at this park as a party of four. We're able to pull those just by fiddle faddling. So that's one good thing about Genie Plus compared to Fast Fast Plus. Let's do a little 6.30 check. 35 minutes at Alien Swirling Saucers, no Genie. 70 at Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, no Genie. Most of the shows are over at this point of the day. Frozen's still happening, but most of them are done. 55 at Smuggler's Run, no Genie. 65 here at Rock and Roller Coaster, none. Slinky Dog, 75, none. Star Tours, 10 minute wait, and there's one for right now. Rise is down again. Toy Story Mania, 45 minutes, none. Tower of Terror, 135, none. That's, of course, without any fiddle faddling. But if you had gotten into the park early and or booked some of those nice looking ones earlier today, 
You'd probably be done with all the big rides at this point. Oof. This one is one of the worst lines recently. It is just long and it is outside and hot. This ride does have single rider though, which allows you to fill in with odd parties. It can get a little backed up at this attraction. However, even though your group will be split up, you will likely go faster than the regular line, just as another way to ride this. All right, here we go. Cast member let me know they're not using the other touch point, which means I can start fiddle faddling now. Of course, when I initially just opened the app, there was one for ailing swirling saucers, and now it's gone. But let's fiddle faddle. Sometimes people say, Molly, how do you wear your hair down in the Florida sun all the time? Why don't you put your hair up? This is why. This is my rock and roller coaster look. Rock and roller coaster, check. And y'all, things were lo looking bleak for a while. I was very stressed when I had to fiddle faddle for an hour to get something. But while waiting to board my limo, I fiddle faddled a few times and I grabbed a 720, which is in about 15 minutes for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Things are looking up. Once I tap in, I'll have about an hour to pull my last one. And it's being a real pain in the alien swirling saucers, if you know what I mean. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is the newest ride here at Hollywood Studios. When it, when Genie Plus launched, it was a fancy ride, uh, meaning it was an additional cost like Rise. However, at least through the summer, it's part of Genie Plus, so it's part of that $15, which, you know what? Genie Plus is a lot of things, but I think it's great that they're increasing the value of your $15 by adding attractions at the parks. It can be a difficult one to pull, but not as difficult as Slinky Dog or Tower right now, but it's definitely a tier one attraction. Speaking of fancy rides, again, this just applies to one ride in each park right now, but a lot of people ask if you can book a fancy ride and a Genie Plus at the same time, or if they can overlap. They absolutely can. Fancy Rides and Genie Plus are two separate entities. The system treats them as two different things. So you can book both at the same time. And again, you can book up to two Fancy Rides a day. Hello, thank you. So you could book Remy's and Rise in the same day, both at 7 a.m. as a resort guest or park open. As a non-resort guest, live your best life. And now the big fiddle faddle for the aliens. Runaway Railway, check, done. Loved it, I think it's so cute. I think it's a must do when you come to this park. If you're not going to book uh, Genie Plus, if you're not gonna buy Genie Plus, this is a great one to do after Tower of Terror, first thing in the morning, especially if you're a resort guest. It also is down to a 35 minute wait right now with a little more than an hour of park time left. And I feel like it's probably not even that long. So this is a good one that will drop pretty heavily in the late afternoon, evening time. So you may wanna save it for that. I do recommend Genie Plus in this park, as big of a pain as it's been throughout the day. I'm happy to share that while waiting to get on Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, I was able to finally pull, after getting got, a lightning lane for aliens for lean saucers. I was very stressed in this one. <laughs> More stressed than Magic Kingdom for sure. Remember like 11 hours ago when I told you this land was awesome at night? Well, it's dusk right now and it is in fact awesome. I'm not gonna lie. I'm okay ending on alien twirling saucers because I get to come in this land at night. I would not have been okay if I didn't win this challenge because of alien twirling saucers. Like if I wasn't able to pull Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and then I walked on it standby for a 30 minute wait, I would have been fine. But I would have been mad if I couldn't get alien swirling saucers, if that's what took me down. And I had to walk on alien swirling saucers for a 25 minute wait standby. Should I be looking like it's tough to be a bug first at Animal Kingdom when I do this challenge yeah. there? What, like the C's first at Epcot? What small ride's gonna try and take me down at those parks? 
first Winnie the Pooh and now the aliens. It's the ones you trust the most. Buzz, I love you. I can't wait for the movie that inspired your toy to come out. I'm so excited. Doctor Strange who? It's all about Lightyear this year, baby. Anyway, Alien Swirling Saucers is a fun attraction for little ones especially. My niece loved this attraction. I actually love this attraction in a like it's more fun than it looks kind of way. It's the same vehicle system as Mater Junko Jamboree in Cars Land and Disney California Adventure. I do think that one swings you a little harder, but I don't think anyone's gonna get off this ride and be like mad or sad they rode it. I think you're gonna laugh and have a good time. I certainly don't think you need to prioritize it as a Genie Plus. I certainly don't think you need to wait more than 20 or so minutes for this ride. But if you do ride it, especially with little kids, it's fine. up and I share my best genie plus tips let's do one more wait time check at 8 20 40 minutes before park closes 15 minutes on alien swirling saucers all the shows are done 35 at Mickey's runaway railway 25 at Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run 60 at Rock and Roller Coaster 60 at Slinky Dog 5 at Star Tours 115 at Rise and 40 at Toy Story Mania and 95 at Tower of Terror a lot of those are the lowest I've seen them all day if you don't purchase Genie Plus waiting till the evening might be a good way combined with rope dropping in the morning to tackle some of these big ones but truly I know it's frustrating and annoying. I do recommend Teeny Plus in this park. Well, friends, we did it. I was legitimately stressed for a while. This park is very, very stressful right now. I totally get it. Let's go over some of the best tips on how to tackle Hollywood Studios with Genie Plus. First of all, no matter which park you're at, make sure you're ready to book your first Genie Plus right at 7 a.m. I use a world clock on another phone and right at 7 refresh pin the one ride you're going for in this case slinky dog dash up to the top and click and be ready to go as soon as possible i recommend booking the genie plus first before the fancy ride however if rise is your ride or die go ahead and book rise first in this park especially strategy is very very important it's still very important to get here early whether that be as an early resort entry or as a regular guest you need to get in early and tackle some of these big ones. If I had come in early, I would have gone to Tower first right away because I'd already locked in Slinky and Rise, maybe Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, try and knock out Tower and Coaster or Smuggler's Run, try and knock out some of those big ones early in the morning before the lines get so long. Do as I say, not as I do. There were plenty of times today where I saw great attractions an hour or two out. I didn't book them because I wanted to go quantity over quality as soon as I could. So I was booking things like meeting Olaf and the Muppets and Star Tours when I could have grabbed a Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway 50 minutes from then. Book the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and do those things as fillers. There's a lot of great filler in this park, but people tend to forget about the shows. Indiana Jones, Frozen, Beauty and the Beast, Dizzy Junior if you've got little ones, those are great filler shows. You've also got Muppet Vision 3D, Star Tours, meaning the characters, those can be great filler as well. As always, plan out your 120 minute rule, use it at a time, tap into a show and then book one that's two hours out because then the show's going to eat up a big chunk of that time. Plan it when you've got your fancy ride book, book it when you've got a meal coming up. The 120 minute rule isn't so bad once you understand it as long as you have a plan. And last but not least, the most important rule I can give you in any park, fiddle faddle, fiddle faddle, fiddle faddle, refresh, refresh, refresh. Things are not always as they appear and things will pop up, I promise. We've got two more parks to go on the Genie Challenge. Look forward to those. Go watch the Magic Kingdom one. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. It's been so magical. Now go watch Perfect Day in Hollywood Studios to see how to balance Genie Plus and Standby. Bye! Ooh, I know. A coffee on the way out.